So we've had, so we have Giftana, Cabazitaxel, which is obviously an, an intravenous cytotoxic therapy. We have abiraterone or Zytiga, which is a CYP17 inhibitor, it's a pill. And then uh, just within the past month or so, the past two months, we've had another oral agent. Brian, tell us a little bit about MDV3100, Enzalutamide, Extandi, whatever, whatever name you're used to using. All three names apply. So August 31st of this year, this drug was just approved. Um, and it's another drug looking at the androgen pathway and the androgen, you know, we're, we're realizing that prostate cancer remains a androgen sensitive and responsive disease. So this is just a very good androgen receptor blocker. Um, blocks actually androgen binding onto the cell. The nuclear translocation and basically the effect of stimulation of a prostate cancer cell. So it blocks it at three levels. Um, it's somewhat, you know, people have called it a super casodex, um, and I think there is a similarity there because it's working with the androgen receptor, but the nice thing about enzalutamide is it doesn't have any agonist qualities, which uh, I think is a big point to distinguish it from casodex. So again, this was a clinical trial. Post-chemotherapy patients, patients were randomized to either uh, get enzalutamide or not. Uh, overall survival benefit was 4.8 months. There were multiple secondary endpoints. Uh, Progression-free survival looked very good. Uh, PSA values, uh, I mean, it was impressive. I think 25% uh, of patients had a 90% or greater drop in their PSA level. So, you know, when you're in this castration resistance space, PSA becomes a little less important, but boy, patients sure love to see their PSA drop by that much. Uh, the one side effect that um, I think has gotten a little bit of headlines and people do need to be aware about with Xtandi because it is a class related problem with this drug is the whole possibility of seizures. In the clinical trial there was 0.9% seizures in the treatment group and none in the placebo arm. So it is, so it's there, it's, it's, it's there. It's a real, it's a real number. Uh, in the clinical trial, the, you know, two of the patients out of the, that was seven patients, two of them had brain metastases. You can ascribe some of the seizures to other things, but the fact that it was not in the placebo group is still important. So I think as you look at who is a good candidate for Xtandi, uh, maybe someone who's had a prior seizure or on any uh, drugs to block seizures, they, you need to think twice. There's not good data. They were excluded from the trial, so maybe they're not good candidates from the drug. And I think that's an important point. I think the good thing, again, just getting back to, again, why I feel, why many of us feel that this, this disease state, and I think castration-resistant metastatic prostate cancer should be looked at as a, as a disease state that's separate from localized prostate cancer. That once again, we're, we're having these therapies. We obviously have two oral therapies, and but the beauty about it is that they have completely separate, different mechanisms of action. So Brian had mentioned so that when you talk about the use of this these agents once your patient fails docetaxel therapy or even fails Provenge, then we talked about seizure activity. Is that is that would be sort of your break point in terms of who would be a better candidate for Xtandi versus Zytiga? Uh, well, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, it's, <clears throat> we're very fortunate to, uh, as urologists now to have options. It's nice to have two different agents that are going to have improvement in overall survival with minimal toxicity. Uh, you know, I think it's, a, it's an individual decision with the doctor and the patient. Um, if I have somebody that I'm really worried about their diabetes or I'm worried about they've got problems, you know, with bone loss and I'm going to put them on prednisone or they're obese, um, maybe my first option is enzalutamide or Xtandi. If I worried the gentleman has brain metastases or he's on an anti-seizure drug, um, my first option might be abiroterone um, or Zytiga. Do you think the steroid issue is a big issue? You know, I think in my practice, I don't worry about it too much. Um, but I think for a lot of people, it's just one more thing to think about, and that's going to be a hindrance a little bit. Um, but I think it's manageable. You're only talking about five milligrams twice a day. 
Uh, so the effects of that and the fear of steroid complications, I think, is muted. And you've you've used a fair amount personally, not 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 you personally, but personally, you've you've prescribed a f a fair number of patients and have them on. Right. And I've had Zytiga. good success with Zytiga. I have, I think, somewhere around 20 patients in our practice on Zytiga, and one patient, uh, 18 months later, is still doing well. His PSA dropped from nearly 400 to 41, still doing well. You know, that was actually a patient I took off hospice and put on Zytiga, and he's still doing all right. 